Praise the Lord. Let's bow our head as we pray. The Lord is going to teach us about sin today. Let us ask the Lord to give us the grace to live above all those sins that beset us, all those sins that keep on making us to fall all the time, that the Lord will give us the grace to overcome them even now. Pray that the Lord will teach you and teach me, teach everyone, that the Lord will give us a teachable heart to absorb his word and to live with, and, and to begin to effect the corrections to the glory of his holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to open, uh, we're going to be going to um, lesson um, six today, the origin of sin. Please, if you are not in, the, in any of the Sunday school forum, please, I, will, I just pray that you just give us your number so they can add you. And uh, you, will have, you will always have the handouts before every Sunday. And also, you have it in your phone to refer back. So it's not, the, it's not uh, something uh, just there in your phone. You can always, always refer back. Now, the origin of sin. The, the Bible passage before us this morning, which I'm going to read, is Ezekiel 28, 13 to, 14, uh, 13 to 15. Ezekiel 28, 13 to 15. I read. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Are we all there in the Bible? You are, you are with Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adored you. The carnelian, the crystallite, and emerald, topaz, oins, jasper. Okay, let me take King James Version instead. I prefer this one is new. new, uh, new. Let me take King James Version. Okay. I'll go back in King James Version. Thou hast been in the Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, the diamond, the, the pearl, the oins, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the canonical and gold. The workmanship of thy tablet and all thy pieces were prepared in the day, in the day the Lord, in the day that thou wast created. 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covered, and, and I said thee so. That was upon the holy fountain of God. Thou walketh up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways. For from the day thou were created, till iniquity was found in thee. Now, to understand this Bible passage very well, it will go from the beginning, but I'm just going to paraphrase and, uh, and so we can understand what is going on here. The, the, the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel, to the king of Tyre. And then the king of Tyre made himself a Debbie God. He saw himself as a God. And from the Bible passage and from the, from the beginning, you find that the word was for, for, for the king. Then later on from verse 10, 10, the tone of the message changed. And I started talking about as if he was not talking about a human being again. He now was addressing Satan. Rather than the human being. For what can, if you read very well, go, they found out that it was still the same, the king the Lord was addressing. But now he made this specific and begin to address the spirit behind the king, which was the devil. Okay? He began to address the devil right now. Because the Lord was addressing the spirit behind that pompous, proudful king. Because he behaved like Satan. And so now an evil spirit empowered him. So the devil was ruling that land through that king. Uh, you, can, you can see a similar thing when Jesus Christ was having a, um, a meeting with the disciples and when he was telling them about the things to come, how he was going to die. In fact, about the end time story, how he's going to die, resurrect, and, and everything. Peter spoke and said, no, Lord, not you. Then Jesus said, Let's get, down, get thee behind me, Satan. At that point, Jesus Christ was not addressing Peter. But there was a spirit that was speaking through Peter, which was the devil. It was the devil who was, he was addressing. Then if you continue the life of Peter, you find that there's a point. The devil could no more hold Peter captive because Peter has now known, when the Holy Spirit was now manifested, Peter was loosed. And you can see the work he did before he died. Well, that's a, by the way. Now we'll come back to the story on the ground. Now this is, this is the Bible was addressing Satan. He said, you were in the Garden of Eden. In other words, Satan fell. Before, the garden, before 
the Adam and Eve were created. Every precious stone, the Lord was not discovering, you know, how, how special. Certain, certain, uh, his name was Lucifer, okay? How the Lord decorated him. Other angels, he said, work, he said that your workmanship and everything was prepared in the day that was created. You know that when Satan was created, there were things the other angels did not have that was prepared. The aroma, the power, the dressing and everything, he was prepared on the day he was created. You see, the Lucifer was created extraordinary. He also, he said that that was anointed cherub that covered it. In other words, Satan was one of those, those that covered the ark. And you can see how powerful he was. The Lord set him like that. And he was also on the mountain of God. In other words, in the midst of the fire of the stone. The only few angels were in that, in that around God. It was the inner carcass, so to say. You know? the inner, one of the inner people there with God. On the fire stone. None, none of these angels had that privilege. He said, the Lord said he, he created Satan, the Lucifer. Let me know he continues the devil. Devil was his name after he was cast down. Now, the, the Lucifer, when Lucifer was created, the Bible said that he, that he was created perfect until iniquity was found in him. So the devil, when he was cast down, he was Lucifer when he cast down, he became the devil and Satan. And, what, and, and before he was cast down, we already know, we're going to come back to the story of the things that happened, how he thought he was God. How he, how he think, he was thinking he can even overthrow God. Thinking that he even had power more than God because he was so close to God. Not fed because he's so close to God. Uh, he already knew all the secrets of God. That is what he thought. And today, I'm sure he's still regretting that action. That's why he's fighting to turn in, so he will not be the only one on that lake of fire that was created for him and those who refused to repent on that day. Now, to, today, the memory verse is, we'll still come back to this later. The memory verse is Psalm 51, five, Psalm 51, verse 5. Can we take it together? Psalm 51, verse 5. Behold, I was sharpened in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Can we take the one to go? Behold, I was sharpened in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Okay? This was a psalmist saying it. And so it is. There's in, what they call it, this is what called imputed sin. Every child born into the world, un, until they give their life to God, there is this imputed sin that came from the original parents. Okay? They were born in iniquity. That's why, that's why we begin to bring children to the Lord so that at the time of their knowledge, they are knowledging them not to give their life to God so that, so that the accusation of the enemy will not be on their life. Now, introduction. Sin and evil are words often used interchangeably because both are similar, both are similar in meaning. Sin and evil, both are similar in meaning. The age-old question of where, how sin began has been explored and debated by some of the great minds in history. And their findings have helped a great deal in improving our understanding However, there is no better place to discover the truth about this subject than in the authoritative manual of God, that is the Bible. In this lesson, we shall attempt to debunk the myths about sin and probe its origin. Praise the name of the Lord. So, two outlines this morning, debunking the myths about sin and sin is a deficiency. Debunking the myths about sin. In other words, we're going to expose what sin is all about, find out what is true, find out about what is made true, that is not true, that is meat. Meat is made to be true, but it's not true. Now, so I'm, so I'm quoting Isaiah 45, 7. If you read about Isaiah 45, 7, the Bible says that, then you said, uh, seek to make God the author of sin. When you read Isaiah 45, 7, you may begin to wonder if God created sin. You say, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do these things. Praise the Lord. Let's open our Bible to Isaiah 45, 7. Although it's written, we want to read it again so you can understand. Because it's a, it's a debate that even till today they are still debating. But we know what the word of God, we Christians, are talking about. Isaiah 45, verse 7. 
We're going to read it together. If you are there, just say I'm there. Are we there? Okay, one, two, go. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. The Lord do these things. Praise the Lord. Who can explain that Bible verse for us? It's very, very important we understand it. That we are, we are debunking what it means, what sin means, what is true and what is untrue about sin. Anybody who can help us? Is there anybody who can tell us? From this Bible verse, will you say that God created sin? Did God create sin? Anyone? Hallelujah. Thank you, ma. Another one, mommy, let me understand you well. God created sin. Did God create? Anyway, in Sunday school class, there's no wrong answer. So, thank you, ma. Did God create sin? Let's come back together. Mommy has told us his own understanding about it. Yeah. Mm hmm. Thou silent, thank you, sir. Thou silent of the sun. I'll, I'll come back. I'll come back to Ezekiel. Okay, let's go to First Corinthians, verse fifteen. First Corinthians fifteen, from verse thirty-nine. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beast, another of fishes. Another birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Mm -hmm. There's one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. We go back to Ezekiel. So the devil. In that verse, verse um, 8 that we read, the Bible says he sealed the sum. Okay? When you say something is sealed, that means it's closed. And some talks about measurement. Okay? Okay? So the way God created the devil, uh, so when, when the, uh, it was called a morning star, okay? He was an archangel. Praise the Lord. And Hallelujah. so when it comes to beauty and glory, he was unequal, okay? So the glory that he had surpassed any other angel. So he was extraordinarily beautiful. So there was no sin in him per se, okay? But when, when you combine this Ezekiel 28 and you go back to um, Esau chapter 14, okay? He talks about Lucifer again. Okay, let's go to um, Esau 14. I heard it because of time. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at a point when the Bible say, until iniquity is fine. Okay. It said, verse 12, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou caught down to the ground, which this weakened the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. 
I will sit also upon the mountain of the congregation in the sight of the Lord. I will ascend. And then, and then verse 15 said, yes, thou shalt be brought down. Okay, so he was perfect in beauty until sin was found in him. So God did not per se create a sin. Okay, devil uh, decided to set his throne above that of God. And God brought him down. And that will happen in, 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 the, in the Garden of Eden. And that was actually, so it was the devil that deceived the, the people of God. Because God has told them, don't eat this. And when they ate it, they fell. Okay, but the, the, um, the plan of God was that God, the creator that he, the creation that he had created will obey him. Mm -hmm. And when, that, when the first shot of that sin comes, but originally Satan was beautiful and there was no sin in him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will, I will summarize this so that we can move forward. Our time is getting there. First of all, to answer this question, you must know the way God operates. God did not create robots. Let's get that one straight. God didn't create robots, okay? He created people with a mind to think and take their decision. You hear the Bible say, choose you this day who you will serve. The Lord does not force. If anything that, any, any kind of, anything that, any, anything, any spirit that imposes you to do something is not of God. God does not impose things on people. You make decisions. However, he will back up your decision. Now, to answer the question, God's original plan, he did not create sin. It is the created that created sin. Okay? It is the created that created sin. It was because the angel, because Satan had the will to choose. That was why he went in the first place. He had the opportunity to think of committing the very first coup that ever happened. Because he had the will. And that will, God never took, took from him and those angels still today. We too have a will. But does God allow sin? It is not that he allows sin, but he cannot stop you from sinning. And he cannot behold iniquity. So sin is your choice. It's not going to kill you because you sin. It's not going to kill you. But he has made provision now in the blood of Jesus. But that is not an excuse. Because the Bible says, shall you continue to sin that grace may abound? The Bible says, God forbid. The provision has been made with the blood of Jesus Christ. Even you as a born again Christian for years, we still commit sin. Okay? Although uh, human beings with great, with great sin, to big, small, and to, to God, there is no great in sin. You still, you, sometimes you still don't obey. When God says, go to uh, uh, Brampton and give this to this daughter, you did not go. It's a sin. For he that knoweth how to do good, that refused to do it, to that person is a sin. So we are always commit the sin by omission, commission, deliberately, non-deliberately. But as soon as you realize yourself, you run to the blood of Jared as a covering. So you see, it is the created. We'll continue, we will continue to prove that it is the created that creates sin. And God cannot stop you from sinning. It is a willpower that God can. If God decides to stop you from sin by himself, by force, he's no more God because he's faithful to his word. His word is, he said that he honorates his word above his name. That is why God is faithful to Satan. Even in the time of Job, you saw Satan came boldly with evidence. He said, see, because you protected him. What would have, if it's a human, what, in the first place, Satan had no business coming to meet God after his fall. But he still would, but that God is a faithful God. Even to that Satan, his word must be honored above his name. We must get that right. So that is why there is so much evil in the world. People are complaining. Oh, why did this happen to me? Where was God? God was in that same place when you were promoted. That is where he still is. Nothing changing. So we must get that very straight. Evil abound. God does not glory in evil, but he will not stop it if he decides to do it. It will not stop you. It is you that will stop yourself and come to Christ and he will help you. Now, let's, we're going to run in the speed of light now. So I'm quoting Isaiah 47, uh, 45, 7, seek to make God the author of sin. I form the light and I create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord God, does this thing. However, King James Version's word from the original Hebrew Ra is better translated as calamity. The context of this concerns God's sovereignty over natural disaster. God is sovereign over all. Like I say, it's a sovereign God over all, including the devil. But it's not the author of sin. In 1 John, in 1 John 1, 5, that is the only one Bible person I'm going to read. read so that in this, this is the message we have heard and declare unto you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. So if we claim to have fellowship with him, and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out of the truth. There is no darkness in, 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 in all. Now, 
what we say, why, why, why did they write that Isaiah 47, 45? Say, you know, these are translations. Anything I don't understand very well. I'll thank God for Google. I Google these things to so find out the original translation. You find that sometimes in the midst of translating things to English, that is why two people can hear something. They say, uh, I, I, that's why you see Matthew, Mark, Jude. Everybody is interpreting based on the way they heard it. So that is how human beings work. And the translation is the same thing. When you go to the, always refer to the original text. You won't make mistake. Then you understand the mind of God. So in this translation, some things have loosely lost its meaning. Okay? So we have to, we have to go to Google. I don't, me, I don't have the old Hebrew translation, but I get it from online that I use all the time. It will help you to better grow in the things of the Lord. Please, I admonish you and I encourage you to, to do the same. So, um, God is sovereign over all. Moral sin originated with the creature, like we saw, not the creator. It is the creator that created sin. In other words, sin was not part of God's original creation, nor was it declared by God's creation, creator, uh, creator's will. So, sin was never his will. The first man, sin. And his transgression spiraled mankind into sin. But this was not sin's origin. This was not sin's origin. Sin's origin was from the devil. But the entrance of sin into the world was from the first parents. Now, Ezekiel, we've read it before. Ezekiel 28, 13 to uh, 15, speak figuratively of Satan, who was created without flaws. All things created by God were. In verse 15, gives us a hint. As to the origin of sin, we already know that Satan until sin was found in D. You were blameless in all your ways from the day you were created, till iniquity was found in you. Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. Further it decays that Satan, which is Lucifer, sinned in his pride and his covering of God's throne. Now, the second outline is talking about the next one I looked at is sin is a deficiency. It is a deficiency because God did not create sin. And sin is a direct opposite of righteousness, what God stands for. So any kind of sin committed is a deficiency. Evil is not, cre is, evil is not a created thing. It is not, a, it's not a creature. It's not a created thing. It's not a creature and has no independent being. Sin is not a, it wasn't, wasn't created. It doesn't, have a, it doesn't have an independent being. In other words, it's not a human being. So sin does not live on its own as, a, as we do live. Also, evil has no standard as goodness does. It, it is a lack, a deficiency, and a falling short of God's, of God's standard, of God's perfect goodness. So that is sin. That is deficiency, sin. Falling short of God's standard. God has given us standards. And man, from time to time till today, is trying to grade those standards as big sin or small sin. But we must note one thing. On the last day, where big sin took people in the same place, the, the so-called small sins still going to take the people. So we have to be mindful and ask God for grace every day we live. That is why Apostle Paul said, I haven't done all this. Let me not be a castaway. Because you know what you are doing for God. You could have just been sleeping in your house, and you could have just forgot about God, and then only for one mistake. So that's may God give us the grace to, to stand even unto the end in the name of Jesus. All sins, no matter how trivial they, they may seem, fall short of God's moral, moral perfection. If you see, read Romans 3, 23, we're not going to read, read it. Talking about falling short of God's glory. God is always consistent with his perfect nature. Consistent. That is why there is evil going on. I say, what is God doing about it? God is also there where, where the good things are going. He does not change. He's consistent. That's why... That is why people are still asking this question. Oh, why did God not allow me to do this? He was a faithful God. Why will he do this? And today they are still arguing that there's no hellfire. How can the Holy Ghost send people to hellfire? Remember that God did not create hellfire for, for, for you and I. He created hellfire for the devil, his demons, and all those people that rebelled in heaven. And so as many who are going to rebel God are going to join them there. So you see, it wasn't for us. So when we, we, we have to, once you understand that the nature of God is consistent, you'll be able to understand things better and not blame God for every woe you go through. All sins, therefore, must come from the creature. And the desire for evil comes from within the creature, in the heart, the desire. Sin was found in Lucifer, not outside. So every sin is committed is from the, from the in, in, inwards because of a choice he made to seek something other than what God has chosen for him. Anytime we seek other than God's choice, we sin. Okay? 
anytime we are, we are looking, we are, we are seeking for what God has not given us, is sin, pride. God, uh, you want to convert everything. God has not given you this particular stuff. You're going to do everything to get it. So anytime you are, you are going for what God did not give you, making choice that God did not make, it is sin. To say sin originated within God's creature does not mean that God was surprised. God is not surprised and still not surprised or caught on our ways by it. God can never be caught on our ways. He sees all. Although God did not bring about sin, he certainly allowed it or it would not exist. You see, since God is sovereign over all things, he could have prevented sin, but that would mean, that would have meant stripping his creature, I mean his creation of their free will. You, see that, you understand it now? God will not strip the creature of that free will he has given us. So that is where we are, we are left with choices. Choose you this day. That choice still continues till tomorrow. So it is, your, it, is, it, is, it is you that choose. And then God will back you up if it's a good stuff you have chosen. Praise the name of the Lord. Before I take conclusion, we have like about 10 minutes. I want to, I want to um, give room for a question. Anybody have a question? We said so many things now. I want to draw us back to somewhere so we can, we can look at it. Praise the Lord. You're, we're talking about sin. So are we clear about uh, well, are we are clear, are we clear about sin not created by God? We are clear on that now. So when you go out, because uh, sometimes we uh, I engage in um, uh, what do you call it? I don't like debates, but sometimes I choose to debate with those people that debate. Then I, when they support it with the word of God, you find at the end of the day they lose. It's good. To, they lose. You know the, what we are talking about because most of the times. People want to blame God for every single thing that is going on in their lives. And that is not how God works. We must understand that. God will never stop you from committing sin. He will never stop you. Some people are thinking, oh, because uh, 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 God, you pray that God should help you. When the Bible says, Lord, let, uh, when, when the Bible talks about the, um, the Lord's prayer, the Lord talks about praying against it. It's not saying that God is going to lead you into temptation. It means that the Lord will give you the willpower to stand when those things come against you. Because there are many, there are all, as we are all seated here, there are what they call sin that beset. In other words, there are sin that easily fall to. There are, some, there are some people, even if they see a billion dollar in this house, one dollar will not miss. Because that's not their thing. But that doesn't mean that the best person is righteous. No. The same person will not see a man or woman pass. Okay? So people have all kinds of sin that bring them down. So you must understand yourself and pray that Lord's prayer. So the Lord will give you to give you the willpower to stand against when the devil comes with this his wiles to bring you down so you can stand okay, and defend God. Because God is pleased whenever we stand and defend him anywhere we go to. Praise the name of the Lord. Any other, any question, contribution? Yes, Brother Femi. Is there a microphone there, Brother Femi? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just wanted to make a short comment about that scripture we read around the Isaiah 45, that God create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. That's scripture. Just my, my first comment is to first of all state that let's, let's establish something. We don't know it all. As, cre as the created beings, we do not have all the answers. Yeah. We do not know all the mysteries. We try our best to interpret. So once we establish that fact that we don't know it all, it removes some the need for us to always explain everything. Some yeah. things should just be left in the mystery of we would get answers when we see God and why that scripture was, was one of them, why that scripture was written. But just to attempt to respond to that, that scripture, scripture says that it is righteousness with God to punish evil. Mm -hmm. So my question for us is, if God is all good and does not create evil, what will he use to punish evil? What will he use to punish evil? Yes. If God is all good and yeah. does not create any form of evil, what will he use to punish evil? It will, be, it will appear like this. If God is all good and has no evil, if he wants to punish evil, he will use good as punishment. As an example, uh, he can sentence somebody to life in swimming pool. Mm -hmm. That's good. He's, there's no form of God is the one who also created hell. Yeah. Hell is the ultimate evil. It is complete absence of God. Yeah. Everything we know as good 
Once you remove it, it's, it, that's the definition of hell. Example, the air we breathe in is the goodness of God, which means in hell there will be the absence of the goodness of God. The air will not be sufficient. The water we drink is the goodness of God, which means in hell there will be no water. It will be absolute test just yeah. to paint a little picture. So God did, does create evil. It's clear in the scripture. We can't remove it from his sovereignty. It is one of the things he does, and he does it as it pleases him. He does it within the scope of his sovereignty. Praise God. Yeah, let me respond to that, uh, Brother Ferby. The evil, that's why I say when you're reading the Bible, go to the main translation all the time so you can understand the context. The evil we're talking about here is sin. Okay? That's what we're concentrating on. God is good. God can be bad for to some people because God is a, his faithfulness is both two ways. The Bible says in the book of Hebrew, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. God is just. So God's justice can be in two ways. It can be two ways. When God created uh, that hellfire, he is the one that supervised hellfire and created it. So that, that is justice for, to God. So God's, God's justice of evil, the way man look at it, is not the way God look at it. God is just. His justice are in two ways. Now, we're talking about sin. We're talking about the evil, the, the evil we're concentrating now is the origin of sin. God did not create sin. Okay? He didn't create sin. Understand what I'm talking about? You see, I'm still, I still debate that here tomorrow. But the truth of the matter is that if you can understand that God's justice is in two ways, it will help you better. God's justice can be good. To you, you call it bad, but to him, it's still good. Do we understand that? I know it's a very difficult concept for human beings to understand. Okay? How can you call good, uh, bad good? That is vocabulary for you. God's goodness is in two ways. It can be good. In the eyes of man, man will call it bad, but it's still good. Okay? It's still good. That's why you must settle that in your heart. It will help us better to grow spiritually. But for sin, we're talking about this morning, God did not create sin. And um, like Brother Femi rightly said, there are many things that is for the, for the domain of God. We can never understand it fully until we cross to the other side, onto the divide. So concentrate yourself in what God has revealed to us through his word. Forget about what he did not reveal. Till today, that's why I fight with my mom all the time. The, uh, the book of uh, Judith, the book of this. I say, ah, the one I have, not even finished reading it and obeying it. Why am I bothering myself about the books that they said they removed? Concentrate on yourself, on what you have. Then your life will be easier. There are many things we never understand. Until we get there, we find that even what we call good here might even be evil. We don't know. But we only concentrate on what we know, what God has revealed unto us. Praise the name of the Lord. Anybody wants anything? Brother Femi, are we getting them? I'm, we're in the middle now, Abby. We're in the middle. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Any other contribution? We have four more minutes. Question? I like that question because some believers won't concentrate on the fact that, oh, God is holy. Why will he not send you to hellfire? I keep telling them, God did not send you to hell. You sent yourself there by what you did. God didn't send you there. You sent yourself there. We must understand it. We want God to make us, if God makes us robots, that's what we're thinking, that God will begin to control us, like control our television. God is not going to do that. You will decide for yourself who you will serve. So I'm going to bow up. He can uh, decide to punish people or make out uh, something that looks evil. Even the Bible says it is a righteous thing for God to recompense trouble to those who, you know, who are troubling us. So even when God does it, though it looks evil, it is still a righteous thing to God. Like, for instance, when he punished the children of uh, Egypt in the Red Sea, it was doing a good thing, though it appears evil. That's just what I want to say. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to read the scripture to buttress that. Um, Romans 11, verse 22. It said, Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God. On them which fell severity, but toward the goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. Praise the Lord. 
justice system of God to God is good. Man might interpret it evil. When you pray that God should fight for you, what do you think that God is going to do? Huh? When you get the miracle, you come and share it in an anointed chapel. But uh, some of that, somebody has fallen somewhere for you to be blessed. That's God's justice system. It's in both ways. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Our time is spent. Let's commit ourselves before the Lord. Pray for your Christian service. Pray that the Lord will give you the grace to overcome every sin that easily besets you. The Lord will give you the willpower to say no when no matters. And say yes when yes matters. Father, Lord, we commit our weaknesses into your hands. Sweet Holy Spirit, help us. We pray, King of glory, for understanding of your word and the grace to live thereby. Father, continue with us in this service. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us once again. Let your name alone be glorified. Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen. Enjoy the service.